Tracy, I have been wanting to do this for so long, and we had planned on doing this over a year ago, but then COVID and all sorts of different things kind of prevented that. So you guys, I am so excited to be here. We have wanted to do this field trip for such a long time. I'm Yay! here with my friend Yay! Tracy. So Tracy and her daughter have this absolutely magical business in Automobile Alley off of Broadway in Oklahoma City called the Plenty Mercantile. It has such a captivating story. I'm so inspired by it, by Tracy and her daughter Brittany. So share just a little bit about your pilgrimage on how you got from where you were to how you have opened up this incredible place. Oh, you are so sweet. Um, this is actually my daughter's business plan from OSU. She went through the entrepreneurship. Okay, OSU program. guys, Oklahoma State Oklahoma University, State, not Pugs. yet. Yeah. Go folks. Go folks. We don't want to. We don't want her to get mad at us. Yes, Oklahoma, OSU, Oklahoma State University. Go folks. Um, the entrepreneurship and sustainability hybrid program. So she wrote a business plan. We decided we would go into business together. Um, looked all over downtown Oklahoma City for a building. We're uh, hoping for a much smaller size, but we fell in love with this 1920 Chevy dealership in historic Automobile Alley. And that was 2012, so we've been here for nine years. So first of all, it shows you what a good business plan it was that it's so enduring. This whole area is exploding, you guys. I keep saying that Oklahoma City is the new Austin, and this whole area is just absolutely incredible. This building is magnificent. It's the venue for something called Creative Mornings here in Oklahoma City. It's where Tracy and I got to know each other. Um, and everywhere you look, I, I'm almost a little bit overwhelmed because there is charm absolutely everywhere you look and it is a good aged, sustainable, earth friendly, reuse, recycle, repurpose kind of, yes. kind of charm that is just what I and Tracy are all about. Just um, like from the doors to uh, your hanging olive baskets over here to the industrial feel of your furnishings and everything. We've tried to make it a venue that you don't have to bring a lot of stuff in so you can come have your event yeah. and it's already it's already here for you. It's yeah, it, and it's it's just, it's not too precious, it's tough, it's rugged. Um, I don't wanna spend too much time down here, but it is an, an event center, and you can come over here. There's a bar that can be set up. There is just all sorts of activities that can take place here. You can see the homage. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah, the homage to the cars and things um, with the garage doors that open up these old industrial windows that we are just... We do a just... lot of weddings. We have a lot of people that get married in front of the windows. We have a great alley, so we have food trucks that pull into the alley with white lights so you can eat upstairs or downstairs. Makes it fun. Incredible. Okay, so here's my first, you're gonna wanna copy this. This is, this is what I'm talking about, the kind of stuff that just makes my brain buzz. Just look at the ladders over here and how they've painted them halfway up and how the paint color matches the wall color and just how chic that is. How chic, how simple. Simple. Yeah. Simple, how it's just rustic elegance. It's got that kind of shaker simplicity that I absolutely adore. And the cafe lights, the exposed beams, the light fixtures, the industrial chic kind of, of light fixtures that's just really, really incredible. And Tracy, go ahead. Oh, but oh we, no, we've got daughter. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. This is fun. Come in. No, you're it. Come in. There. Okay, so you guys, you guys meet Brittany. Sure, you're good. No, no, no. She. It was her brilliant business plan that made all of this happy. It is a multi generational thing. I'm Linda. I have not nice met to Brittany. Nice you, Brittany. Oh, so nice, nice to meet you. you. They're great. Yeah, so it's just, we're going to take a look at the rooftop. Perfect. We're going to kind of look around the shop, and I just can't sing your guys' praises enough. Oh, it's just absolutely you. incredible what you've done here. Oh, we're a good team. We have an amazing team that helps it all True words. make it happen. Well, I'm sure we're going to meet them a little bit later. Perfect. A little so. bit later. Yes. So if you will excuse us, we'll let you get back to your work, you. and we're going to go upstairs to Perfect. the rooftop. Yeah, have fun. Take care. Thanks. Thank you.
So Tracy and I have just come up the stairs and I really want to give you all a feel of the, the size and the scale of this place. Look at this massive hanging basket. It's a wooden hanging basket on this incredible industrial chain right here. And then very considerately, because we've had so much rain lately, they have umbrellas at the ready. And then look at that magnificent wall display through these plate glass windows of the cactus collection that they have. And I'm sure there is a story behind those behind those containers. What are those, Tracy? They were to carry grain on a conveyor belt. They scooped up grain and So where do you find all of your things? It's just in a we do a lot round top Canton, just flea market. Just flea everywhere. markets. Yep. Well it's sometime um, I need to go along with you oh, just to gosh. see. How, I, I that, know, that would be so much fun. Oh I would gosh. just love yes. to see how your brain works. Um, I can drive a trailer like nobody's business. I, I bet she can. I have already seen her uh, <laughs> her driving backing abilities today. Scary. That's a whole nother video. But look at the scope. This is downtown Oklahoma City. So we are just just very, or, or you don't consider yourself downtown, but this is the Automobile Alley District, which is just contiguous to downtown. Would you say that? Exactly. And Stuart can show you the skyline and the Devon Tower, for those of us around the world or in other parts of the country, that is the tallest building west of the Mississippi. True. And it is an energy business. Oklahoma City is kind of one of the energy capitals of the world um, for oil and gas. But it's just so cool. There's even, even on a hot day like today, there's a nice, beautiful breeze up here. And this is the rooftop garden that's just absolutely, absolutely incredible. So tell me about the genesis of this, how you came up with the idea, and just a little bit of the background. Well, we fell in love with the building and we knew that we wanted a green space and really the only green space there was was the rooftop. So we went up through the skylight, uh, put our decking on and then started our vegetation. We knew that we wanted to be a pollinating pocket for downtown, that was very important to us. We wanted to harvest rainwater to the extent that we could um, and grow some, grow some plants up here and do workshops so that we could um, bring people, which brings people into the shop. Yeah. So. Amazing, amazing yep. venue. And just be on the alert, we're gonna put our heads together and we're gonna come up with some workshop op opportunities, that's some things that I can do up here. Maybe we Definitely. should do something on thrifting. Wouldn't that oh be my fun? Gosh, yes. That could be so I'm much fun. So sure. speaking of the sheep trough. So they cut it in half and it has cushions that go on it and so do you guys do your, your metal work and your magical transformations in-house? Do you? We have a list of makers that we work with and if we get an idea, we send it off and they tell us if we're crazy or not and <laughs> usually send it back to us and they're just super creative and very supportive. So. And, and I know that you try to work with local artisans as Absolutely. much as possible and you'll see that in part two of this, which will be another YouTube video, we will actually go into the store below and we will do a little bit of shopping, uh, like maybe, shopping. maybe a lot of shopping uh, and you can share a little bit more about that. Love tell that. us about this whole area. Well, we, because of square footage, we can uh, our occupancy on the deck is 150 people. Um, in order to have the deck at the front of the building, we would have had to have taken out the roof. Oh my! So this is not occupiable space, but we wanted we wanted to um, to use it. We wanted it to be part of our pollinating pocket. So we have raised beds and irrigation and trees that have made it. We have our solar panels, so we are now run on oh. solar energy, which is very important to us. Um, and we have butterflies. We worked three years to get butterflies on the rooftop, which is extraordinary when you're having, we do a lot of weddings. So that's a, just a nice thing to have. So, so it's more of an event center. You, you can't come up here and have a drink on a Friday night, but you, but it is, and, and unless you happen to know the owner. Yes, exactly. 
We're going to start that on Friday. We're going to so start that. Sip and shop. So you'll have to we come are. on Friday. We sip and shop. So, okay, yes. how many ideas have brainstorming ideas have we come up with in just about the past twelve hundred and ninety five? <laughs> yes, I know our list is <laughs> is so, is so so long. I'm but okay, so here's another great idea. You know how I've always talked about partitioning whatever space you have, whatever size or scale of your garden, whether it's large and massive or it's a small urban garden like mine in Crown Heights or it's even a, even a courtyard garden, you can still partition it into different garden rooms with different kind of spaces. So if this would kind of be your massive dining room, your massive entertaining area, replete with bar, Stuart, if you don't mind showing the bar over there. And I can't, I can't convey just how magical it is at night when all of these string lights are lit up. It is magic. Okay, let's stop for a moment. Can you hear the church bells in the distance? It's just, it, the ambiance is just incredible. Downtown OKC. Downtown OKC, so then you go through this, this wonderful gate, um, and we're gonna be coming back here shortly actually to take some stills because part of the reason that the timing on this came to pass is because I'm shooting some stills up here for my book in Rooftop Gardens. It's all about uh, the elegant and edible landscape. And this is about as elegant in terms, in both aesthetically and functionally as any space I've ever seen. With your water barrels, with your absolutely, with your gorgeous view, with your solar panels, with your darling little rustic carts. I just can't Those wait to handy. get- we use those, I use those every day. Oh, I can't imagine how handy they are. So this is just, this is absolutely, just absolutely I'm so glad you brilliant. Won it. Oh, yeah. you you know, you know, I do. Yay. So tell us now, Tracy, about we've got. She's got her own um, her own definition of raised bed gardening that runs the length of this fence, which, by the way has detail on it all that reclaimed all yes. reclaimed was it when you got this as reclaimed fencing did it have this multi-colored multi we took a barn down our families took a barn down first and last but we've salvaged uh, almost entirely every piece of wood that's up here came from a, bar, a barn that we took down and how oklahoma how how yes. oklahoma is that so great homage to it Yes. It's continuing the life. So yeah. yeah. I, I love, love it. Love so things have that have a story. And um, it's a rooftop experiment. The, the, the plants do not go all the way down to the rooftop because the rooftop heats up. So they're suspended. And we brought in roof light dirt, a special composite for rooftops. And it's worked out great for us. Okay. So tell me about roof light dirt and where you get it. I got it online. Oh, actually, I got I found it online and can't remember it's a local place that you can get it from. okay so on our brainstorming uh, yes. list she must send me the link to this because it would be perfect for hanging baskets um, anything exactly. where you really wanted to reduce the weight where weight was was an absolute consideration sure. and t so all of these your intent was pollination pollinator friendly pollinator magnets yes. Um, we use no chemicals. Our biggest, um, I think, adversary are people pour their drinks out because we're in an event space. So they water our plants with alcohol. So you'll, you may see a few little yellow. Spots, uh, they might be going like that. this. They, they might look a little drunk. But you know, it's a little early for that. So we do have some pockets, and we just pop plants back in there, and um, we rotate plants out seasonally. Uh, we do a lot of weddings, so we say, you know, in, in winter you'll probably see native Oklahoma grasses, um, but it, it does rotate as the, seasons, as the seasons change. And I bet Tracy would be willing to share, this is something that I'll try to put up on my website or on Instagram, I bet you would be willing to share your plant list with us. Oh, of course. Of, of course. Because these all look great. Well, I it's mean, a they, hodgepodge of... It yes. just looks great, but it's it is a designed hodgepodge. You can see that she's got a rhythm and repetition of these pollinators across the space, and that's what makes it look so brilliant, 
and so cohesive and probably so healthy. Um, before we get down that way, this is another, steal this tip, another idea, because if you had bare wood here, whether it was pressurized and treated or not, this would be a problem. Exactly. So talk about these little end caps. Little, little solar light, so it casts the light down. And we also made our uh, fencing, it's called a drink shelf. So it's wide enough to set a drink on. So we can accommodate more people on the rooftop. So all the way around is a drink, a drink shelf. Yeah, now I am thinking that on almost, under any circumstances, this would be, if you were single, <laughs> a great place to meet a significant other and tell me about that our i knew <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> it is but additionally our uh Brittany, our my partner and daughter met her husband here he walked in the store the first week we were open and they were married uh two kids later he gave me two grandkids so i love this place it was a win win yes, win 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 did all i include around. everyone Okay, all the way around. This is so cool. Stuart, you've got to show. This is one of the best things about Oklahoma. Look at that Oklahoma sky. Look at that cool vista over that way and the Scott Chevrolet brickwork up here. Again, you guys, this is Automobile Alley. We were just talking with our friend Joe, who, what's his formal title? Joe Hudson, he is the Automobile Alley representative for downtown OKC. And Automobile Alley does absolutely incredible things with their Christmas lights, with their parades, with, it, it, it's just, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. And we're gonna be doing more about that. But this is just such a, it is just such a special, special area. Um, so let's go over here. So ha you said this had a capacity of 150, what did you tell me? 150, and we purposely left it wide open so you can bring in rentals. We have some rentals, we knew we, didn't want to chop it up so you could design it any way you wanted. So my brain again is going over time so I am thinking I don't know that you know this but I've got a son who is getting married in Colorado oh. this month July 31st oh, and good. another son um, who is also engaged in getting married. He is in Singapore so their locations are both far away and I'm already thinking we were talking about having a party here in Oklahoma City for both of them. This would be the perfect. I know a great place for you. This would be the perfect <laughs> venue. Thank you for taking Wait, that man. off of my things to yeah. stress about Check. list. Check. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. And look at this. Okay, so she's got all of these cute and it's on is it on drip do i hear drip back yes. here yes it's on drip irrigation she's got alyssum dusty miller milkweed you even have some evergreens in here that's incredible you've got some hellebores you've got what else do you have here more hellebores and this is by the way you guys we are facing north so this is on the south side so these hellebores are in enough shade but still in enough light uh, we have oh that's just that's blooming dusty miller i thought at first from a distance it looked like it was yarrow oh, May, yes. maybe uh, moonshine moonbeam yarrow but again, you guys, she's got this planted in patches. Is this, and I assume this is Indian, is this Indian yeah. Hawthorne? Okay, so what she's done is she just has a formula of milkweed with Dusty Miller, hellebores, alyssum, her evergreen, which could be, I say evergreen, because you could use different types if yes. Indian Hawthorne isn't in your repertoire. And then she comes over here. She's got some diamond frost euphorbia, but it's all in a tight color palette. It all meets your specification of attracting pollinators. And it just all looks so well thought out. It's a neutral palette for pictures too. So for photography, it doesn't pop out and applies to everyone. So we've, we've tried to be very intentional about that. And, we add in if there's a hole or something we just 
pop something in there. Yeah, so you could add, you could do that plop and pop thing where if somebody has a, has a color motif for that event, right. you could literally just pop in some pots here of color exactly. and it would then conform to whatever the color palette was. Stuart really exactly. Stuart really liked that. Can and it's very experiential. Oh look, the lights have come on. They Look all at they that turn sky. different colors. We had a gender reveal and we turned them to pink the other night, which was a lot of fun. Uh, They're all LED. They're uh, all made by what? Jasco locally. A, what, a gender reveal? A, gen a gender reveal. So they found out they were having a girl, so we turned all the lights pink, which was really cute. Is there anything you haven't thought of? Oh, well, you and I are getting, yes. Uh, well, I'm going <laughs> to yes, help you think of the things there you, you haven't, a thought lot. Of. I haven't thought of. Okay, these, are, these would be tractor seats. Am I right? Am I yep. right? Yep, we just powder coated them. Powder coated tractor seats. I'm sure you had the powder coating done earlier. All of this is weatherproof. Look at her scales. Recycle oh, glass? Inside the composite, yeah. Tell us about some of these fixtures over here, Tracy. That is a flea market find, all of it. And we just rotate our plants out of that. We we pulled the sink out of a field, out of an old um, barn. I had a friend that just let us have it and we just built it in. All of the metal is roofing from the barn that we took down. We use the, the trough for drinks, beer, sodas. And this over here? We use that for, it's a champagne, it's a riddling rack to dry champagne bottles. And once we serve wine, we just stack it so it's kind of a hands-on thing throughout the night and makes it fun. We also have herbs behind, we have a bartender's herb. <laughs> so you can go back here, and- I'll switch places with you, Stuart. Go back and use our mint and our rosemary. The last freeze wiped out our seven-year-old rosemary. It wiped out mine oh, too. Oh my goodness! It, it was heartbreaking, wasn't it? Then they were huge. They were huge. Just yeah, it really. And and this is a little bit exposed up here. So the fact that that rosemary lasted yes. for seven years is yes. is pretty incredible. Remarkable. Pretty incredible. Now, another thing that I want to demonstrate is that all of this industrial, these industrial sheet components that again, you have thrifted, you have staged them in a way that speaks to almost any type of aesthetic you have. So, tell us about, you've got a modern aesthetic at your home. Or yes. you, I, th I assume yes. you did because you said you were near downtown. Yes, we're in a in a modern home here. We just felt it was very, it was just important to appeal to to everyone. So when someone walks up here and they have a modern thing that that it works in this space and the juxtaposition of very modern against rustic, I love. Yeah, I love that. That high that high low tension. Yes. Um, looks great. So it could go any of this type of stuff and any of this stuff in her store, by the way, which you guys will just go crazy over. Um, it speaks to any kind of aesthetic, any kind of interior decor. So if you like farmhouse chic, if you, I have English traditional, if you have a modern streamlined aesthetic, if you have colonial prairie, if you have um, shaker, if you have any of that, kind of, you know, just prairie style. All of this type of thing can speak the language of all of those different types of expressions of creativity. Oh, well, we hope so. Thank you it, for that. Yeah, it really, really can. I so. so I hardly can stand to leave this because a cool friend has come in. It's crazy, isn't it? That's it, Oklahoma, though. Yeah, Oklahoma. 45 minutes is a whole totally different. Yeah, Keeps what did Will Rogers say about our, our weather? I don't know, we have the book, I should know this. Yeah, if, if you Stay don't like the weather in else. Oklahoma, just wait for a yes. minute and it will change. True. And it, it has, change. and I always want to do a huge prayerful call out to everybody on the West Coast and on the East Coast who are having the kind of weather that we normally yes. have this time of year experience. It's hard. Yeah, really, really brutal temperatures. And we here at least are prepared for it and have air conditioning. Yeah, and big and some of you guys don't. 
I can't thank you enough. Oh, my pleasure. I can't. I can't I'm so thank you honored enough. to have you here. No, so it has just been incredibly fun. Look for a lot more activity, ideas, programming yeah. uh, from the Plenty Mercantile, and we'll have the train take us out. Well, welcome to the monsoon season in Oklahoma. Stuart and I just got back from shooting our video at Plenty Mercantile on the rooftop, and we just got it completed before the skies just completely opened up. It is still raining, as it has been doing nonstop for the past almost two weeks, Stuart. Look, you can see in the back, standing water. The ground is so saturated. There's just no place else for it to go. And yes, I do so wish I could send some of you some of this rainfall that um, so many of you are desperately needing it. I, I put on this ensemble today because it was sunny this morning when I got up for a brief nanosecond and I thought, oh, I can finally kind of have a summery vibe with one of my very favorite things I've ever gotten off of Amazon. This is a straw fedora. I absolutely love it. It is such good quality and I think it was all of like $15, you guys. And I will put a link below because you're going to want one. It comes in all different colors. I wear this all of the time. Um, wow. <laughs> Big Thunderbolt. Uh, the uh, jeans are, excuse me, I'm just kind of undone with this storm. The jeans are Banana Republic. I've had these for years and I fringed them myself to make them a little bit more au courant. I just got these sandals from Dillard's the other day. They are Chelsea and Violet. I don't know if you can get these online or not, but I will look for a link. I love them, they're very comfortable and they were on sale. Um, my top is another one of my favorite Madewell t-shirts. My earrings, you guys, are another pair of those Atrios earrings. This time it has the thin band. I cannot tell you how much I love this line of jewelry now. I'm becoming infatuated with it. Um, we're ordering a pair for Stuart's mom, aren't we Stuart? Uh, remind her to send me which one she wants. <laughs> I'm ordering a pair for my daughter-in-law to be, so I absolutely love them. Um, my jewelry, so I do, I do want to share my jewelry today too. This bracelet, my husband is a thrifter too, I guess. He actually got this at an estate sale and it was being sold in a shop in downtown Salida and I got this for Mother's Day a number of years ago. It's one of my real, real treasured pieces. This bracelet, with a little bird on it. I love this. This comes from Janet Mavick um, from Orchard Jewelry. I will put a link below. All of her stuff is garden and nature inspired. I love it. This little bracelet, I'm only gonna show you this because it has such sentimental value to me. I've had this bracelet for probably 40 years and I bought it when I was in school, when I was in high school and in college. I worked in a gift shop and I bought it at that gift shop. Wow years ago and this little chain link just delicate gold chain bracelet this belonged to my mother-in-law that passed just recently so my ensemble of bracelets all has meaning for me today um Stuart and i are going to try to wrap things up in here we're out in the studio but just in case um it's, it's it really is getting a little scary lightning thunder um and the lights have also been flickering so who knows if we're going to have to retain power or not. So anyhow, there's my fashion ensemble for today. <laughs>